This watch was sent to me for the purpose of this review by Topper Jewelers. They are one of a very few select retailers selling this watch at launch. Go to topperjewelers.com, place the H1000 in your cart. In the special instructions section, please enter Doug FNJ sent you before you check out, and Topper will send you a little extra G-Shock swag. So thank you Topper Jewelers for sending me this watch, especially at launch. Now on to the review. Hello everybody and thanks for checking out my review. Today I'm going to be going over the Casio G-Shock. This is the G-Squad GBD H1000. If you wanted to look up the instruction manual on this, just do a Google search for Casio module number 3475. I'm also going to put a link to that in my description. So getting into the watch, this watch is fantastic. It's a good size. It's The screen is extremely legible. It's nice and bright. It's got a lot of features, more features than I think they've ever put into a G-Shock. It's got GPS. It's got the heart rate. It's got a lot of physical features. It actually connects with your phone and gives you notifications. And one of the things I love about this watch is it offers a vibration feature as well. All right, so just to give you a physical walkthrough on this watch, obviously it's the all black version. Uh, they put a lot of screws on the outside here. I think that's to keep everything nice and tight to the case, so this way there's nothing loose. On the black portion of the bezel here, this is stainless steel. Um, and then on the outer ring, you have the solar panel, so this way it does charge. On the right side of the case, you have two buttons, and then you have the triple sensor. And the triple sensor is going to give you the altimeter, barometer, and compass, and also thermometer reading. On the left side of the watch, you're going to have your run button, so this gets you right into the exercise modes, and along with the GPS. And then, of course, you have two buttons here, and all the buttons do multiple purposes, which I'm going to walk through shortly. Uh, the straps are very comfortable. They are very flexible, as you could see, and the sizing options are very flexible as well. There's a lot of holes here, so this way you can find the perfect fit. Typically, on a watch that has the heart rate monitor, you typically want to just have it tighter rather than looser. I tend to keep my watches a little loose. This allows me the flexibility to have it perfectly loose without being too tight, which is great. Um, it's also got a charger here, and rather than like the range man where they would given you a full cradle for the charger, this one allows you to plug it right in. So just to give you an example here, it's a USB charger. So it's gonna give you the standard USB one to plug into a charger or your computer. And then you have the three prong connector here and all you have to do on the three prong is basically just plug it in it fits in nice and tight and it charges it up it i tell you what i got this uh, probably with about 25 percent charge this morning it charged up in less than an hour to full so the charging is really easy to go through and pull it out and what I would do is if you get this watch, you probably just want to keep that connector clean with some alcohol periodically just to make sure that nothing uh, grimes up in there. All right, so now getting into the display on the screen, uh, this is going to give you a lot of information to be able to work with. And the thing I like about it is because it's so large, it's so easy to read. So the first thing I'm going to show you is at the very top, you're going to see this on every screen we're going to go through, and you're going to see a little text bubble on the top. And that shows you that a notification came through. So it could be a text message, an email, it could be a phone call that came through, a calendar event, but basically it's going to notify you if you have pending notifications that you didn't look at. Then you have the date the day of the week, the time, the daylight savings time, the battery life indicator, the seconds, and then a little indicator on the bottom to show you what's currently active. The second screen is going to give you a step counter. So it's going to give you the step counter for today, and then it's going to give you the step count throughout the week. It's also going to give you the same information. It's going to minimize the time, but like I said, on every screen, it's going to have a lot of the same information that you could look at. The third screen is going to be your overall workout information. So you're going to see at the thing on the top here, it's VO2 max. So I looked it up and that's basically the maximum rate of oxygen consumption measured during an incremental exercise. So the name is derived from three abbreviations. It's V for volume, O2 for oxygen, and then max for maximum. So this will give you some information on your workouts. Then you have your achievements. So you're able to set goals in either the Move application or you can go online and you can actually access this information at a website. So this is just keeping you alert of what your monthly goals and where you're at with them. Then you have your heartbeat indicator. So this is going to check your heartbeat throughout the day and then it's going to give you a minimum and maximum. So this way you can kind of keep track of your heart rate. Then you have your dual time. So you have uh, your second time on the top and your primary time on the bottom. And then also both of them give you the dates. So this way, if you're traveling to another country, 
And that's it for the display modes. All right, so one of the first things I want to show off on this, I'm going to get into it more in depth on a future review, but I just wanted to give you the initial impression on this. When you press this run button, the first thing it's going to do right off the bat, it's going to access the GPS. Now I'm inside, so it's not going to be able to lock my location, but when you go outside, it's actually going to, not it's going to notice where you're at. And then when you press into the buttons, it's going to give you a stopwatch. It's going to give you the heart rate. It's going to give you a compass. It's going to mark your total run, so how many feet that you've run. It also gives you the altimeter information. So if you're doing a lot of inclines or declines, um, how many calories burned based on all the information that it's going to give you. So this goes over a lot of really good health information when you're doing a workout. So again, I'm going to go over that in a future review, but I just wanted to kind of give you a brief description of what that run button does. All right, so the next thing I'm going to go over the modes for you. So the first thing I want you to let you know is that when you go into a particular mode, so if I'm on the stopwatch mode and I'm done using it, rather than having to sift through all the rest of the modes that you have to go through, you can just long press it and it takes you right back to the timekeeping screen. The second thing I want you to understand is that the buttons all serve multiple purposes. So a lot of times the run button is going to work as an enter button, display and mode buttons will work as up and down, and then the back button will get you into information and then back out of information. So I just wanted to go over that first. So going into the heartbeat mode is the first one that comes up. So the first thing that you're going to notice on the bottom here is that the sensor is active. So what you would want to do is basically hold it up against your wrist. And I actually checked this against my Apple Watch and my Tag Heuer Connect and all three of them were pretty consistent with the readings. So I would say that they're pretty accurate. So that's the heartbeat sensor. So then you have the workout timer and what the workout timer allows you to do is run multiple timers through a workout. So for instance, if you wanted your first timer to run for 10 minutes, the second timer for five minutes, the third timer for 10 minutes again, you could, you could set up five different timers throughout the screen. And what this allows you to do, for instance, is if you're running, you could run for 10 straight minutes and then you get that alert you could walk for five minutes and it'll, it'll count down time. So I'll give you an example. I give you a one second timer on the first one. You'll notice it goes right to the second timer. So this way you don't have to keep messing around with the settings there. And then if you want to stop the timer, you press the run button again and to restart it, you go into the back button and it starts off at the first workout again to get into the settings. What you want to do is press the top left button. And this is going to allow you to shift through the workouts. So you press enter and then you could change from 60 minutes down to one minute, of course, or zero minutes. And then you could set your seconds, save and exit. And you could do this for each timer. So it's really handy. Then you have your stopwatch. So all you have to do is press the run button and that gets it started. You press the run button again to stop it. And then you reset it with that back button again. And then of course you have your heartbeat sensor and your time at the bottom there. Then you have your barometer and also gives you your compass and your altimeter as well. So going into the barometer, it's going to give you your graph. So if you see that the graph is going up, it means that you're getting clearer weather. If you see it, that it's sloping down like it is right now, that likely means it's going to rain. And if you see a steep slope down, then that typically means that you're going to get a pretty nasty storm. Also keeps your heartbeat sensor at the bottom. It gives you the temperature reading at the top right, and you could change the settings however you want. So it can give you a Fahrenheit and Celsius, for instance. You want to get into the next section. You would press for the compass, and the compass is going to just activate and give you the direction that you're walking. Also keeping your heartbeat sensor, your battery sensor, and your time. Press it again, and it gives you your altimeter, and that'll give you your feet above sea level. Once again, the heartbeat and the time as well. And as you're going on an incline or a decline, you'll see that the graph will go up and down depending on what your walk is. Then you have your activity, and this is going to give you your information from your last workout. So it'll give you your distance, your pace, your ascent, your descent, your time. So it gives you a lot of information on there. So if you want to go into your logs, as a matter of fact, you hit the logs and it'll give you all the data from multiple workouts. And you press the back 
to go back to the last section, and then you can go into your next mode. Training status is current status of your training. So if you're going through a current workout, it'll give you your heartbeat. It'll give you all that information. It'll just be live information. Then you have your notifications, and this gives you your emails, your text, your phone calls, your calendar events, your to-do events. So you press the run button to check. And so, for instance, if I wanted to go in and check the message here that I sent myself earlier, just to give you an example, it'll show you that Doug sent a text. Then you go back. You can go into your emails. So, for instance, my LinkedIn email here. And it'll give you the information of the email. And it also gives you a live notification. So when you get a notification, it'll just show it real quick on the screen for you. Press back. So those are the modes. So just to give you an idea what it looks like on the wrist, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. And to put it on is really easy. And like I said earlier, sizing it is really easy because you have so many holes that you can work with there. very comfortable to wear and I don't find this to be too large at all all right so now to give you some size comparisons I'm gonna start off with the range man for instance the range man is one of the largest watches that G-Shock has made and you could see the circumference is a lot larger it's definitely a lot thicker And the difference with the range man in this one, as far as the display, is the range man has uh, sapphire. So this is much bigger. I'm going to go with the smaller watch, 5600. And I think what makes this watch a, feel like it's a little smaller is the fact that it's not as thick. And then here's an example with the frogman. Probably comparable on size and wear with the Frogman. Just about as thick. And then the 9052. So that's how it sizes up with a variety of different G-Shock sizes. All right, so that's it for my initial review on the G-Squad GBD H1000. I want to thank you for watching, and this is just after my first day, so I will have future reviews on this watch to get more in-depth on some of the features. I also want to thank Rob at Topper for sending this out to me, so if you want to order this, uh, I believe it's up for pre-order right now, go to topperjewelers.com. If you could put in the notes Doug FNJ sent you, I would definitely appreciate that, so he knows it's worth it to send me these watches. You can also press thumbs up if you like the video, and if you really like it, you press subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications. And you can also find me on Twitter, at DougFNJ. And for more discussion and more information on these watches and many other brands, go to www.watchyouseek.com. And a lot of great discussion, a lot of great information that you can find on there. So I want to thank you again for watching my reviews. I want to thank you for your support. Have a great day and stay safe.